Alright guys, back recording Dark Souls 2 again. It's been a couple days, but I've been a little busy with things. And also my last couple of parts have been mostly just gameplay. Because I was under either under the weather or it was rather late at night to record. Also in part 13 I had said that I would transition over to the sunken... Uh, Crown of the Sunken King DLC, but I've decided that it's a little too difficult to do some recordings, and I will come to come back to recording at it at a later date. Um, so I'm just going to continue on in Drangelic and head back to Drangelic Castle and progress towards the next boss and then go into an area which is one of my most hated areas especially because I play magic character those who know what I'm talking about will see me struggle through that place but you cannot succeed without struggle so let's begin shall we Alright, so here we are back again, and we shall return to Drangelic Castle. Um, some of you may notice that I have another bonfire on this list, and that is because I captured an additional bonfire, which allowed me to get a rather powerful set of armor and access to one of the covenants which I may do at a later date but I went in there and <sighs> got sufficiently crushed very quickly now the next boss I have to fight is the looking glass knight which as design I think he's one of the coolest um, but to get to him is one of the most annoying tasks if you don't play your cards right. So to get to him you need to get through this door. Now this, do this door requires a key. To get said key you have to get up this elevator. Doesn't look very much like an elevator but trust me it is. To get to the elevator you need to activate a golem. And the golems in Drangelic Castle are activated by when something with soul substance dies near them. So, to get something that is soul substance, you have to go up here. And as you can see here, there are a couple stone soldiers. Now, Unlike the stone soldiers that are at Kingsgate, these soldiers come alive several at a time. For example, these three on the left here come alive all at the same time if you hit them. On the left, they come alive two at a time, much more like Kingsgate. So what you have to try and accomplish is kill one near to that golem over there and have the soul transfer from the body to the golem. Now running in there for you melee players might be a good idea but for magic players such as myself it is a horrible idea. I've done it several times. But what I've learned is that you can wake these stone statues by having explosives go off near them. So I'm going to use my hexing urns here to try and wake them up. But since I'm not in the area, they won't know what to do. So let's give her a shot. And that's a miss. Enough. 
light. This may take a while. Come on. Now it's actually a lot easier to throw to the right. There we go. Now that he's awake, he'll come over to where I am and try and get me. But since I'm not in there, he can't do anything to me. Well, that went better than assumed. Um, so now I'll try and do these two. And the golem is activated. Excellent. All right. I'll use my aged feather to get back to the bonfire. And then use the elevator to get the key that I need. What I should do is rest. While I haven't done a whole lot in um, Crown of the Sun King DLC, I have obtained one of the new weapons from it, and hey, I, I was wondering what this weapon was because I had seen some montages and stuff of PvP matches, and wondering what it was and why it seemed to break the game and it's actually well it's game breaking 
but it's very fun to use. And it's this sword. And I will demonstrate why it's game breaking. Also, the embedded is really creepy, and also in NG Plus, you have these stupid red phantom guys. That was a waste of sunlight spear. Oh no, I got him. Nice. Yeah, so it's the story about the Embedden is that he was an undead that, well, a hollow rather, that got the taste for human flesh. And I guess bound himself to this door. And the only way he can be released is by having a key shoved through his face. And believe me, the key to do so is an entire greatsword. So yeah. Dark Souls is weird. Like, DS2 more than DS1 has a lot of stuff where it looks almost Silent Hill-esque. There's the key to King's Passage. But more importantly, what I was saying about this sword is, now, regularly, his normal attacks are just like any other sword. However, if you do the strong attack, it actually works like a whip. And if you do the strong combo, you do a thrusting attack but with an extended blade. If you do two-handed, you do this twirl, and your um, light attack becomes a stabbing. So, very interesting sword. I've watched some very cool PvP videos where they use it and some of the new magic spells. King's Passage here. Now, what I should actually do is, um, go rest at the bonfire and regen my spells. So that I can fight all of you. Now, they're actually opponents on the way up to the fog gate over there. Now I can you can see one right away it's that um, guard at the end of the hallway there with the shield up. However, there's a few others. Much like there, 
stone soldier. Shoulder. Soldier counterpart. These twin blade ones only come to life if you get too close. However, they hit much higher damage, and I would say their skill is much higher as well. Plus, their chain combo is incredibly long. Now that's one of the things that is nice about um, the um, DLC for The Crown of the Sunken King is it teaches you how to properly backstab because there is a certain enemy type that becomes all but a joke once you learn how to backstab. Mm. Now let's see. I'll run back to the bonfire and see if there is any summoned help I can gather. Let's see. Not well then. I guess I will go it alone. Well, not alone. Alright, Ben Hunt. Hopefully you can help me in this one because Well while I like this boss, he is also really tough. Because that was more than half my life in this game. Target him. Leave me alone. And 
don't want to get that like Well, it's good to know that Sunlight Spear still hits them pretty well. Ah! Yeah, I know, as much as I liked looking last night, he is a tough boss. It, like, it's not that his moves are really hard to read, because they're not. It's that, um... His power is just so immense when he fights. Really? Got all these evil phantoms, but no helpful phantoms. Perfect. Just great.
that hard. I'm gonna fight on my own. And I never dodged him. I attacked before because I've always had help. Alright, here comes the assist. Oh boy, that's a good one. Okay. Back away, back away. Roll. That was directly into it. Put your shield down. So I'm going to have to fight him a little more. Up close and burn hard. down your shield and fight. I like having some help That went a lot better than I thought it was going to. Because usually what I do in that fight is I stand at the back of the arena and I spellcast them into bits. But it seems that I can in fact fight him up close. So, that went a hell of a lot better than I thought it would. Good deal. Hmm. Now, this next area is Well, I don't like it, and it doesn't like me, is the easy way of saying it. And now with lightning being nerfed, it's going to be a... 
But for better or worse, welcome to the shrine of um, Amana. I guess how that's that's how you pronounce it. So I'm gonna, so I'm probably gonna do this in the next part, but I'm gonna point out some why this area is annoying. So number one, a lot of water. That is both bad and good because water amplifies um, electrical attacks, but it also, because it's super deep, makes you move slow. Um, two, lizard men. The only way to tell where they are, if they're below the water, is these little glittery flies. And you can't really do too much damage in, to them until they're out of the water. Three, these clerics with hammers are some of the most overpowered NPCs I've ever run into. Near the halfway point in this area, there's a place where there's about six of them guarding a fog gate. <sighs> God damn it. And that's not even counting the um, ones that cast magic and have and the magic they cast is a homing spell. But anyways, I digress. I will come back to this area in good time. Right now I will run back to Majula and possibly think of a strategy on how to deal with this place. <sighs> oh. Well, thanks for watching. More coming soon.